Now let's have a look at Studio One's interface. We're going to start from the top and move our way downwards. And uh, I'm not going to be covering every single thing that we're seeing on the screen right now because that would take hours, literally. But I will be covering everything you need to know so that when this course is finished, you can just fire up Studio One and start making some music without the interface standing in your way. So let's begin by looking at the toolbar here at the top. And I just want to preface this section by letting you guys know that the shortcut keys for these tools are your number keys on your keyboard, on the top of the keyboard. So the number one key will select the arrow tool, the number two key will select the tool next to it, and so forth. So let's begin with the arrow tool, which is what we're going to be using most of the time. This lets you select things, it lets you drag clips around, it also lets you double click a MIDI clip and enter the piano roll editor, or double click an audio clip and enter the audio editor. Another thing you can do is right click and you'll see this huge menu that has all sorts of options. In this particular case, we right clicked on an audio clip, so we have the file tempo option, so we can set the BPM for this particular audio clip. We can also speed it up and slow it down. We can transpose it, tune it if it's somewhat out of tune and we really need to get in there. And then we have the submenus here at the bottom, event, audio, and instrument parts. And this is a lot of stuff to cover. So my suggestion is that you go through the Studio One documentation where they cover every single one of these options and functions. It's worth the read because there is some really good stuff down here. Next, we have the range tool, which lets you make these kind of unruly selections and it just snips everything exactly where you set it. I don't really find this particular tool very useful for the way I use Studio One, but it might be something you're looking for. I much prefer using the arrow tool for this kind of uh, task because it selects the whole clip rather than splitting things. But if you need it, it's here. Then we have the split tool, which as the name implies, splits things. And the eraser tool, which does exactly what it says on the tin. It erases things. So if you need to very angrily delete large portions of your song, this is the tool to go with. Next we have the paint tool, which is actually a lot of different tools in one. If we click and hold, you'll see that we have all of these different tools. First we're going to look at the freehand tool, which is the one selected by default. It lets you essentially paint in regions in the sequencer, so you can create an empty MIDI clip, or an empty audio clip, depending on which track you're painting on. But perhaps the most useful thing you can do with the paint tool is draw automations. So let's go ahead and press A on our keyboard to toggle the automation view. And let's draw something right here. I'm using the freehand tool, so this shape is very unruly. But if we want to tweak anything, we can just go back to our arrow tool and move any of the individual automation points around. And you'll notice that everything is snapping to the grid. Also, when using the arrow tool, you can turn any straight line into an either exponential or logarithmic curve. So super handy. Then these other tools will just focus on drawing these particular shapes. Like if you want to draw a line, you can use the line tool. Parabola will draw very nicely shaped curves. Square will draw a square wave. Same with triangle. Saw. Sign. But then we have the transform tool. And this is really, really cool because we can do this. We can select a bunch of automation points, and then we can stretch them and contract them in any direction. And even cooler is that we can skew them as well. So we can make some really, really crazy automation shapes very quickly using this set of tools. Next, we have the mute tool, which lets us mute individual MIDI 
or audio clips. We can also mute track folders, which are these tracks here, which I will be talking about in a little bit. Then we have the audio bend tool. Let me just zoom in to this uh, beat loop here. It lets you click and warp audio clips around. So this is our clap. I'm just going to move the clap over. Again, we have snapping turned on, so it's snapping to the grid. It's very useful to quickly fix the timing on audio clips. Finally, we have the listen tool, which lets you audition individual MIDI and audio clips without the need to solo or mute any tracks. It's particularly useful if you have a very busy song where perhaps you have 50 or 100 tracks and there's just all sorts of clips all over the place, but you just want to pinpoint that one particular section and listen to that one particular clip. You can just select this tool click on it, hold, and it will play only that clip. Now, this question mark button is a pretty cool feature, especially if you're a beginner. It's called the Info View, and if you click on it, you'll see that we have this black bar here, and what that does is that whenever you hover over a section of the interface that has some kind of keyboard shortcut for a particular function, it will display those shortcuts. So it's a great way to become more familiar with Studio One, or even if you're somewhat seasoned already, it's always good to make sure you're not missing out on some killer keyboard shortcuts. Next to it, we have the audio bend function, and then we have strip silence, which pretty self-explanatory. It lets you define a threshold, or you can just use one of these three presets right here, and it will detect and erase any sections of your audio that are perceived as silence. And then we have our quantize options. This is somewhat of an advanced feature as well, because as you can see, there are a lot of things to look over. I'm going to be covering this as part of the level two course, but for now, let's move on to the IQ button, which stands for Input Quantize. And what this does is if it's enabled, like it is right now, we can record a MIDI part with our MIDI interface, in this case, my keyboard, and it will quantize the notes I'm playing as they are being recorded. Over here, we have a drop down box with all of our quantize values. And as you can see, there's a lot of different values to pick from. By default, I believe it's 1 16th note, which should be okay, but you might want to play around with it. Next, we have the time base, which is something that we previously set on our new song dialog window, but we can choose another option here now. So for instance, if I select seconds instead of bars, you'll see that my grid is now a time grid rather than a musical beat grid. So this is useful if you're using Studio One for tasks other than music, like sound design, for instance. Next to it, we have the snap toggle button. So when this is enabled and you move things around in the sequencer window, you'll notice that everything snaps to the grid. And this drop down box gives us different snapping options. In this case, I'm using adaptive which is my preference because it adapts to the current zoom level. So if I zoom all the way out, you'll notice that the snapping now is measured in bars. But if I zoom all the way in, now we're snapping to 16th notes. Moving on, we have the ripple edit toggle button. And next to it, we have a very important one. This is the auto scroll button. So when auto scroll is enabled and you hit play to play your song, if the playhead reaches the far right side of the screen and your zoom level is not enough to display the whole song, Studio One will just scroll along with the playhead. Next, we have the button to open Scratchpad. And this is something I'll be covering 
in the level two part of this course. It's a really, really cool feature that's unique to Studio One. It essentially lets you create uh, an infinite number of alternative sequence windows. So you can have different edits, different arrangements of your song, and you can also use scratch pads just to maybe prototype a melody or a beat without having to change anything in your main sequencer environment. And right next to it, we have the video player button. So Studio One supports most video formats. So you can just drag a video file into Studio One and make some music or do sound design while watching the video and sync. It also has an option to extract audio from whatever video you've imported directly into an audio track. So that's really cool. This is also something I'll be discussing in level two, but just keep it in the back of your mind. That's where the video player button is. Moving all the way to the right, we have the transfers button. So if we click that, we get something that is very much like a downloads tab in your browser. So this lists everything that you've downloaded from the PreSonus server. If you're signed into your PreSonus account and you download sound sets or any expansions that you might have purchased, this is where you can keep track of your downloads. Next to it, we have the start button, which takes us back to the start page. The song button brings us back to the song that we are working on and project opens a new project or takes us to whichever project we might be working on at that time. Next to the song button, you'll see that there's a little down arrow. And if we click that, it lists all the songs that we currently have open. So there's this really awesome feature, which is also, I believe, very unique to Studio One. You can have as many songs opened as you want at the same time. And that includes projects as well. So you can have your whole album like 10, 15 song files open concurrently and also your mastering project. And everything runs super well, very smoothly. Studio One is incredible at resource management. So even if you have a slow computer, it is possible to have more than one song open at a time. All right, so that about covers the top section of the Studio One interface. In the next video, we're going to be looking at the main sequencer window. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting, and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.